Andy here. I'm in the Yellow Craft booth with Craig. His shirt says AB7. AB7R. AB7R. And you're one of the Yellow Craft volunteers. Correct. Yep. I've been a field tester for the K3 since they first came out and also with the KX3. Wonderful. So what type of things have you been doing with your KX3? Um, well, last weekend we I took a camping up to a horse camp with me and um, set it up with a NorCal doublet hmm. and um, running the uh, low power. I did have an external SLA battery on it, so okay. I was running 10 watts. I was kind of cheating a little bit, sorry. Uh, but my first contact with that, with the doublet, was down in Paraguay. Wow. You know, okay. running low power, and it's kind of up in the mountains, so it's not a great location. But uh, what type of um, antenna? Uh, NorCal doublet. A NorCal doublet. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Just what? a little 26 gauge uh, computer wire oh, yeah. stripped down, hanging okay. from a uh, fiberglass pole. Cool. Yep. So, what other experiences have you been watching? You know, the KX3 owners. Yeah, um, we know uh, Steve with the goats. Yep. Everybody Steve with the goats and um, N7. Um, RR, I think it is, okay. Bruce Pryor. Okay. Um, he's been taking his up to uh, some of the summits in the area and cool. doing mountaintop operating. Okay. I plan to do that with mine on the back of my motorcycle, um, take it to some summits, but yeah. I don't like to hike up there, but if I can get up there with my You're motorcycle, right. I'm good. <laughs> or the horse. <laughs> oh, I think you can always couple onto the motorcycle battery if you wanted to. Yeah. So, yep. cool. Well, I just ordered mine here this morning, uh -huh. so now I have the long wait. Uh, do you plan on using the IQ output on the KX3 for a pen adapter? Or? I may. I've seen some people playing around with some iPad apps for it. Um, there's people doing that. Um, I know an inexpensive sound card that a lot of people are using is the Creative X5 okay. 5.1 Pro. Okay. And um, there's a, a small mod that you have to do to that be to get rid of some of the uh, 5 volt rail USB noise on it. Okay. You just add a capacitor yeah. in there. Yeah. Sure. Very simple to do. Okay. But it's a stereo input card, so it's very compatible with that. Mm. Gives you uh, 48 kilohertz of bandwidth display. Yeah. And you just basically take the IQ output and go directly into the right. sound card and use either HD, SDR, NAP3, okay. uh, any of those software applications, and it works great. Cool. Looking forward to it, so probably be mm -hmm. around Pacific on time when I'll be getting mine. Or, yeah, or yeah if you just before. ordered today, it's going to be a little while. <laughs> well, I have lots of things to do, and I really should be editing and producing a lot of videos. So gotcha. I have something to do to keep me busy for the summer here. Okay. So you're located in the Oregon? No, Portland I'm area? actually up in uh, Whidbey Island. Um, in Washington. Oh, okay. Um, Ellicraft's people are kind of spread out all over the place. Their yeah. you know, main base is down in California, but yeah. um, Lyle, the DSP engineer, he's from Washington or Arizona, okay. depending on the time of year. <laughs> um, Dick Divendorf, um, okay. who does all the uh, utility programming and okay. has been working on the new Cat 500 tuner. He's up in Washington. In fact, he just moved. Uh, he's about 10 miles away from me up on Woodby Island now, yeah. so I go visit him a lot. Cool. Well, there's quite a crowd here. Everybody's lined up, twisting the knobs, and, and they've been keeping Lisa busy in the background, uh, placing orders, so wave. <laughs> hey, Lisa. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Okay. And look for this in a couple weeks when I get home from vacation. So there you go. We'll wander over somewhere else. Okay. I'm in the Kenwood booth with Phil, and you just came back from Dayton, where we survived. You survived, yes, sir. You had a new box with a hundred knobs and showing big off the new TS 990s. Wow. It was the talk of the show too. Uh, you can imagine. It's um, we're going for SEC type acceptance in August. August okay. are a few big dates. I'll get my sales samples here in the U.S. and start traveling with those and loaning those I need out. One dropped off to my house. So I can uh, put something together. We'll maybe. talk later. <laughs> We'll talk later. Um, it's just going to be a phenomenal product, though. It comes sack full of roofing filters on the main mm -hmm. band, a 300, a 500, a 2.7, a 6, a 15 kc. Right. Uh, even open spots for optional filters that we're not going to make. Oh, let, okay. Let, let people like Inred go crazy sure. with it. So. If somebody wants a one and a half kilohertz sideband contest filter, you finally get what you want yeah. without modifications because we're going to we're right. going to back it. So. You want to tear one out to do that? Right. Right. So, um, so on the display, you've got the spectrum analyzer, 
Yeah, well, I had a couple people comment. They thought the meter was real. It looks so. Yeah, you want to. It looks like a DR Saval movement. Yeah. It really does. You want to take a poke at it with your finger yeah. just to see if it moves. <laughs> um, no, it's really high res TFT. There are two TFT screens on mm. there. Um, the large one's controlled by one 32 bit DS process. DSP processor by itself. Okay. Uh, there are three processors in the rig, one for the main band and one for the sub band and the TX unit as well. So is the refresh rate real rapid on the Spectrum this morning? I think I don't have the specs on it yet, but it should be amongst the fastest in the business. Okay. Is there a VGA output so you can take No, that? but there is a DVI output a on DV the back. Well, better. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, we've got optical audio in and out as well on the back. There's okay. a 10 megahertz uh, reference in and out as well. Uh-huh. So, a lot of features, a lot of stuff we haven't seen in radio or amateur before. Okay. We've even got uh, patents that we haven't applied for yet that, you know, there's stuff we're going to be doing with that small screen on the front, yeah. the small, the, the one that's above the main VFO. Right. I can't even talk about it yet. It's going to be some nice new features. Okay. Well, we're looking forward to it. and. Unfortunately, the radio is in Friedrichshafen. It's in Germany now. Um, from there, it'll go back to Tokyo. Tokyo ham fairs in August, and okay. we'll start shipping to the U.S. in November. November. Just in time for everybody's Christmas list. In huh? time for Black Friday, I, I do can, believe. I can just see the Kenwood November Christmas ad. <laughs> yes. Doesn't take much imagination. And then know. everybody just kind of leaves the magazine where their wife can see it, right? Yep. Yeah. You're cover four up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> I want this under my Christmas tree. That's it. Again, thank you much. Rainy, Good seeing you again at the pleasure. show. We'll see you in Pacificon. I'll be down there. It won't be long. Won't be long, yeah. All right, thanks. Thanks much. Okay. Made that easy. Yeah. Thank you. I can do what? You can edit this, right? <laughs> Why would I want to do that? <laughs> You've never been on YouTube before? Uh, no, I've been in the post office in like this. In the post like office this, on the wall, okay. <laughs> so I'm here with Jim, AF6PU, with log period, uh, with the elk antennas. And uh, I have one of these at home. I should do a video on them one of these days and kind of boost your sales up. So. Uh, oh, that'd be okay. Uh, so why don't you tell us about your uh, beams here and, uh, and what people do with them. Yeah, we, we offer three different uh, log periodic antennas. They're nice and small, just the booms are two foot long. And the neat thing about them is that they're they're log periodic antennas in that they offer really good reasonable gain over the whole band that we cover. Okay. And these are dual banders, so they're two meter and four forty, fantastic for satellite work. And like I say, you you have really good gain over that, that entire band. Uh, some people like them that they're so nice and tiny. They they'll if they live in an antenna restricted area, they will uh, they'll put them up in their attics. Yeah. Or they maybe they'll have the black boom and they will just keep them in Stealth. the back. Yeah, stealthy. That's yeah. right. That's right. And uh, uh, so that that's kind of cool. A lot of people use them, like I say, work at satellites, direction finding. Uh -huh. But they're also great for just MCOM situations, public service events, okay. or DXing. Cool. You, collecting grid squares. And we also offer a 220 and a 440 uh, uh, megahertz uh, antenna and they, they work they work absolutely okay. as well. So I notice it's a dual band but there's no duplexer. No duplexer. So you can go full power. Full power. Full you, boat. You run what up to 100 watts or? Uh, no 200. 200. Okay. 200. So basically anything you can buy off the shelf radio wise you can drive it. Correct. You know, Correct. Yeah. And I, so. I could, if somebody needed more juice through it, I, <laughs> I could, I could make that happen. But you know what? We want the five kilowatt model. There you go. There you go. Hey, what, 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 what happens in Seaside stays in Seaside. seaside. No, <laughs> no, not necessarily. <laughs> I guess we'll get out of Seaside. I got the conduit to the internet here. <laughs> uh oh. But uh, no, it's it's um, uh, 200 uh, watts is pretty reasonable, I yeah. think, for 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 yeah, what we're trying to accomplish. Sixes, seven thousand. 897s, all those radios would do what 50 watts, I believe, on two, and maybe that on 450 too. So exactly, yeah. so. exactly. But they're, they're they're just they're just a whole lot of fun. Uh, they're 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 lightweight. They just weigh over a pound. Yeah. And so you know it's easy. You know it's not going to exhaust you working the birds. And yeah. uh, um, sometimes we've used them like in MCOM situations in my county. Uh, where we had to talk to multiple cities and it was easy just to spin around sure. and, and uh, talk to different towns from one town to another and that was kind of cool. Sure. 
and and like I say, pretty reasonable gain and and just attached to a little HT. Yeah. Uh, but you could attach to a base. You just attach it to anything you want. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Jim. Well, thanks a lot. Well, thank you, sir. And enjoy uh, enjoy CPAC here in here in Seaside. It's a huge crowd today. So hope you sell lots of antennas. It, I, well, that would be that would be wonderful. But this is a boatload of fun. Yeah. Love it up here. Just okay. love it. Thank you. Thank you.